the lizard removal incident in The Great Divorce a good illustration of salvation by grace? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod, live in San Diego. Say hi, everybody. So this isn't, uh, this isn't exactly, uh, there's some hitches in this giddy up, but let's run with it anyway. Yeah. Um, the key question that the supernatural being asks is, do I have your permission to kill it? And the guy swiffles and swaffles about and says, I'm sure it'll improve given a few days. Do I have your permission to kill it? Well, that's pretty radical. Do I have your permission to kill it? And it's sort of illustrative <clears throat> of what our old dogmaticians called objective justification, that Christ dies for all. If you're Reformed, uh, don't shiver. We actually take that position. Christ died for all, and hell will be inhabited. When, when we say that <clears throat> coming to Christ in his saving office He's the one who gets the credit for drawing us to him and everything else. You say, but I have free will. Lutheran answer, you have all the free will in the world to go to hell. Um, in fact, it's, it's good when you're considering this sort of question, bring me the 20 positive things that you think you're bringing to Christ dying for you. And we'll do them seriatim, one after t'other. What you think you're being, what you bring positive to the deal. On some of these shows, I've said my contribution to my conversion is my sin. Pure and simple. There's my contribution. It's not my decision to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, it's my sin. And he's the one who pursues me and you, pursues till he's got us. And isn't that something we can, it's a good focus for what we're seeing in this illustration is, is the voice of God coming from outside saying, and, and now it's a question rather than a statement. Right. That's where it starts to fall down. Right. And you see the illustration of what you were just saying. You, the, the free will you see here is, that we see illustrated is, ah, uh, don't do it. Yeah. Right. No, 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 don't save me. Yeah. No, no, that's uncomfortable for me. Yep. And it was, too. Yep. And the next part, that when it actually happened, there's a loud scream that people yep. freaked out about. Yep. It, it's really illustrative in one little Lewisian story. And, and Lewis was no special friend of the Reformation. Uh, he was in the Church of England, and... and uh, comfortable there, and the Church of England and the Reformation, I won't retrace, but it's not a pretty story. We managed to lose the whole English Isles in a few years, but all of them. But isn't the, the struggle that we have, we want to believe that we have this, this positive effect towards our salvation. Absolutely. And one of the things that's very prevalent in our culture and churches everywhere is the decision. Sure. That decision. Sure. Let me, say, let me give you something radical from the 16th century reformers that you might not have heard before. We have all of this, con, uh, all these books on self-help. They fill bookstores. There's seminars. In the 16th century, the self was the problem, not the answer. Talk about being countercultural. The self is our problem, not our answer. If you haven't heard that before, I'm sorry, you should have it. Some church, some pastor make refer making reference to that. Now, the, now, let me the, ask. the self has got to be overcome by Christ. And so on that point, let me ask, then doesn't it from the outsider's perspective look like it's abusive or something that God would do this without permission from us, faith us, mm -hmm. didn't check with me, mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't putting out a, a little, you know, 
thing on Facebook, would you like to be faith today? No. Mm -hmm. Our answer is always no. If, if our answer is yes, he gave it to us. But doesn't that seem that, that, that's offensive? I, I, why would I want to worship a God that's, that's chosen me and for me and it was, I had nothing to do with it? Because your only choice is to be a recipient. A guilty recipient declared as if innocent. Imputed righteousness was at the heart of the gospel. And uh, that, I think there are probably 5 to 10% of the Protestant and Lutheran churches in, in America that proclaim that. It's a pretty small percentage that what we bring to our conversion is all negative. And if we yes, it was a gift from heaven. Think of the conversation with Peter. <clears throat> Who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're Elijah, others say you're the only. Who do you say that I am to Peter? We believe you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Answer. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. One of the illustrations I use all the time is Christmas. We live in that all year. And one of the, one of the, one of the things I like to do is say, if, let's, let's turn this a little bit and look at it from a different perspective. If you haven't really experienced Christmas yet, I just had a conversation like this with somebody, a, a, a faithful believer who's struggling with this out in Wales. And uh, the idea that Christmas hasn't been there and then suddenly, let's say, a gift appears. Mm -hmm. Is that, if you phrase it, if you frame it that way, is that that offensive? That there's suddenly a gift, would you see that as, how dare you? Would that be your response? <laughs> I, I don't think so. It would be for me? For me? Like I'm way back in the background. Think of the parable, the story of the, the Pharisee and the publican. And the publican announces to God in case he's forgotten all the things he's done in his name for this long, and he tithes and he does this and he does that. But the publican standing afar off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. It's one of the times Jesus used the word justified. I tell you, that man, the latter one, went down to his house justified rather than the other. The one who's... Now, we, we've been studying at church, we've been studying Philippians. Okay, good. And we were, we've been talking about where St. Paul draws himself out as the model, the guy killing it on following the law. Like, yep. You think you follow the law? Let yeah. me show you what yeah. following the law looks yeah. like. Yeah, here's I'm my that, lineage. I'm that guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah. there's nobody compares to me on this. Yep. And, and yet what happened? He was Saul at that time. Yep. And Jesus shows up. And he says, who are you? And he says, you know, I am, I am Jesus, whom you're, whom you're persecuting. So he's following the law and persecuting Christ mm -hmm. by name, yep. according to what Jesus says. How can you follow the law and persecute Christ at the same time? Mm -hmm. Good question. Good question. Yeah, of all the people that God would have selected, who would have thunk it would be Paul, Saul? Who would have thunk? In one place, Jesus says, I'll show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. What's the key word in Philippians? He's in jail. What's the key word for the whole book? Joy. How can you be joyful when you're in jail? <laughs> He brought good news to his jailers. He was that joyful. Yeah, yeah. He actually had good news for the jailers. Yep, yep, yep. There was no stopping him, even for them. But the, but the whole, back to the original question, the good news at that point when you come to that space is that there's nothing you've got, and I'm going to go ahead and take care of this for you. Right. That's the, that's the Christmas person. Right. 
The and things given also, in spite of me. And it's also very offensive. Think of a, the average American. He's, he's got a list of 20 positive things about himself that he would say to the Lord Christ. And they're all false. Every one of them self-inflated. And yet, Christ's answer is, you're mine. I've made you my own. They didn't know yet how. I'm glad all the disciples were so clueless, because I would have been. You're going to what? You're going to go into Jerusalem? They'll kill you. <laughs> he told you that. Yeah. 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 I've got this and you don't. But you're going to be added in. You just don't know it yet. And I'm going to do it. And they even scattered. Yeah. This, when, yeah. when the shepherd was struck. Yeah. These, yeah. Are, these are men who were so solid in their, in their right. faith just a moment ago. Especially Peter. Lord, not I. Mm-mm. <laughs> Peter, before the cock crows this morning, you'll have denied three times. Not only will you do it, you'll do it in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. But we think that highly of ourselves. And so the theology of no glory to me Right. Only glory to him. Right. Or it's think, frustrating. Think of the, the, uh, the one lost sheep. And he leaves the 99 and goes and retrieves it. And boy, I know who that sheep is. <laughs> and you get a bit of a picture of what happens in heaven when the one is rescued. In yeah. this story in Lewis. Yeah. The, 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 I won't go into the, the change, the physical change that the, the man goes through. Even, his, even the lizard goes through yep. and tears off and disappears. Well, it doesn't quite disappear quickly, but way, way off and up into the mountains. You really get a feel where, where Tolkien and Lewis really were of one mind on that imagery. Yeah. And going up into heaven, and there is great rejoicing. Even the land itself rejoiced. Yeah. That, that it had been ridden again if, hadn't, as it hadn't been in a long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, everything's alive and everything celebrates for the one lost sheep or the lost coin, the one that is rescued. Yeah. Which we Lutherans say is done in baptism. Yep. Yeah, baptism is our great illustration of doing nothing. Maybe crying because the usher's got the water temp bad. But I, I'm, I'm crying. What are you doing to me? What is that stuff? Not a positive sort of, oh, it's you. Mm-mm. Just pastor putting water on me in the name of the Holy Trinity. And a word. Yeah, with the word. The, the efficacious part. Yep. So uh, part of the offensiveness of the gospel is the one-sidedness of it. He's going to do the saving, or there ain't going to be any saving of anybody. But it's hard for us to say, you mean all, all, everything I contribute is negative? Sorry, yes. Yes. So He's going to save you anyway. So Jesus, while I'm sitting against you, you're going to save me. Yep. In the, while we were yet sinners, Romans 5.8. So as we said recently this, in this week's episode, you are safe, little sheep. Yeah. You are safe. I died for you while you sinned against me, little sheep. Come to 1517.org for more, and we'll see you on social media. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it. <laughs>